Hello, my little pretties. What's up? It's your mistress, the Queen of Lions here, and today we are back with another episode of Shadows and Pretties. Now, this is episode 26, and uh, you probably noticed that I changed the podcast picture. You're probably seeing it right now. Um, I actually decided to change it a little bit because the one I had, I had it for a while, so I decided to change it to something even cooler. So, I made this, so you feel free to give me compliments on it. I did really well on it, even though it might not be as great as I thought, but yeah. Anyways, today we are going to do a never fairy tale. I did Goldilocks and the Free Bears last video. Today in this video we are going to do is, well, basically, sickly, we're just going to do the uh, this other story made by Hans Christian Andersen, which um, is called The Ugly Duckling. Now, this was was first published in 1843, which is um, a fairy tale about an, an ugly duckling who uh, basically, you know, was born in like a set of eggs by, you know, a bunch of ducklings, which is the duck's, you know, eggs got mixed up with someone else's. So basically the ugly duckling was, you know made fun of and he became like an outcast of the place so he was kind of forced to you know be on his own and stuff like that so there are many other versions of you know ugly duckling so i will go on with the other the original version of the story and we'll talk about the other versions that they made so basically what happens is when the story begins with a mother duck's eggs hatch however one of the little birds is is then perceived by the other birds and animals on the farm, which of course is the ugly little creature that suffers from much verbal and physical abuse from them. So, surprisingly, you know, in the other versions, they didn't really have to include that. They had to, you know, change it up over the years just to make it more, you know, kid-friendly, kind of speak, if you're wondering about that. So, he wanders sadly away from the barnyard and lives with a wild duck and geese until hunters end up killing laying the ducks and geese, and of course he finds an old, a home with an old woman, but her cat did hen tease and taunt him, to him, and once again he was alone. So the duckling sees a flock of migrating swans and is delighted and excited, but cannot join them as he was too young and cannot fly. Once winter arrives, a farmer finds the freezing little duckling at clean and brings him home, but his founding is frightened by the farmer's noisy children and flees the house. So, of course, he spends more visible winter outdoors, mostly hiding in a cave on the lake that partly freezes over. But when spring arrives, a flock of swans descends on the lake. So the ugly duckling, now having grown to, and matured and became a swan, is now unable to endure the life of solitude and hardship. And more decides to throw himself into the flock of swans, deciding that it'd be better to be killed as such beautiful birds. But, however... For he is shocked when the swans welcomed him and accept him, only to realize that he looked at his reflection in the water. He was not an ugly duckling, but a swan all this time. So the flock, of course, ends up, you know, welcoming him, and he ends up, you know, having a good ending. Now, of course, they did, you know, change, you know, the story of the ugly duckling over the years just to make it more, you know, suitable for kids. Even though uh, kids' movies do evolve hunters like the Fox and the Hound and Bambi, they have evolved, you know, almost hunters in almost every single, you know, Disney movie that evolves with animals. But for this, this is actually pretty much really good. So, of course, it's just pretty, pretty something when it comes to this. So, of course, there are other for Furies and all that. And of course, there are other adaptations. Like, Disney did an adaptation of The Ugly Duckling in 1941. But then years later, in 1939, they did another adaptation of the movie. And of course, they did some other versions of this. So, I am going to explain. Of course, there's two silly sympathy songs were produced called The Ugly Duckling. Which, that's one of the, um... Well, one of the adaptations that they did. But... Of course, with that being said, they are doing, they did some more other first stories. So, of course, Jerry Bree Pinkney, of course, in 1999, adapted this into a children's pictures book. And they have done a couple of other, you know, um, stop motion musical. They've done some, you know, other 
adaptations. Like, of course they did some other ones throughout the years to make it more Ugly Duckling, more of a um, kid-friendly kind of thing. Now, of course they did some other shorts and movies, but of course they did one of the famous movies by Crayola. Which, of course, you probably do know who what Crayola is. It's like the company that produced, you know, these markers, these um, pencils, and other stuff. So, you could probably definitely say right now that Crayola has done, you know, lots of different um, stuff when it comes to, you know, making their own thing. Well, this Ugly Dunkling movie that I'm about to tell you came out in 1997. And... I'm going to say right now that I re it's on YouTube for those who are wondering. I remember watching this when I was a young kid growing up. Like, this VHS I used to have as a young kid. I grew up watching this on VHS so many times. But, you know, what's really surprising that it is really hard to find right now unless you're looking on Amazon or something. If you're lucky even to ha get it on DVD. But I'm just going to definitely say right now is that this is obviously a very well-made um, episode, in my opinion. Well, it's not really an episode, but like a movie. Now, I know some people might disagree with me thinking, you know, this movie is not that great. But I'm just going to say I respect your opinion. So, if you think the Christia, Hans Christian Andersen one is a little messed up, this one probably is just more kid-friendly. But it doesn't show, you know, certain scenes but of course with that being said i'm just gonna basically begin with this so of course in this one that we do see is basically um ugly duckling has a name and his name is augustus in this one when in the original story of Chris hans christian anderson he doesn't have a name which is very surprisingly sinly so we ba basically augustus meets up with this uh my mouse name um Scruffy, who basically wants to become an actor and stuff, so she basically joins um, Augustus in this little um, little adventure when Augustus runs away, just because he looks different. So of course, of course, basically we see is you know Scruffy didn't think you know he's all you know um, all ugly and that she finds him to be a really cool guy. Yes, a lot of people thought she was a Scruffy was a boy, but apparently she's a girl, and that's what I kind of thought too. I kind of thought, you know, it was a girl at one point, so <laughs> that's very surprisingly, to be completely honest. So when the movie goes on, you know, basically Ugly Duckling goes into a lot of dangers, kind of similar to the original, you know, fairy tale tale of it, except it's a little different, you know. There are certain parts that weren't in the original one, like the ugly, you know, like Augustus and Scruffy go into the farm and cause mischief while trying to look for food is one of the things that was not in the original fairy tale. That was just, you know, people throwing certain stuff in because they just want to make money and they wanted to make replace the um, non-kidly, kid-friendly um, era with that. So that's kind of explains one situation that they solved. Of course, with all due sincerity, there is another part of the movie, you know, if you watch this movie and you've seen it as a kid, you probably will get what I'm talking about. But what you see in a certain part is, you know, Scruffy, you know, says there's like this feedier or something. That did not exist in the Ugly Duckling story. But yet again, they're probably just decided to, you know, kind of make up their own version of it. You know, with Crayola, a lot of people were like, hey, let's make you know, this is to a really interesting kids movie, even though it is based on the original fairy tale. So they decided to go ahead and, you know, add certain things that were not into the original story, which is quite something to be completely honest. But of course, we're just going to say right now. So I guess that's this one thing that was just to be completely honest with the whole situation going on. However, there is a cat and chicken, just like it said, but however, the woman who is, you know, fattening this guy up, well, the, the, the chick, the duck, is to basically so she can cook him. So that doesn't really happen, but of course, the cat and the hen have names. I don't remember who the cat's name is, but I think the, well, the hen's name is, but I think the duck's name, the, not duck, um, but the cat's name must be, um, 
Darwin or Darwin. I think it was Darwin, but I'm not really to 100% sure because I haven't seen this movie in years. So basically the cartoon is like all really done very well. It's like, it's made in the 90s. So when it comes to 90s stuff, you will see how very good and talented these um, writers do when it comes to that. So you could probably understand and, you know, see why exactly it's the case when it comes to that. So when it comes to, you know, the whole situation with, you know, the ugly duckling, you know, being alone and stuff. All of this is just basically the same, except at one point throughout the movie, which of course, um, Scruffy and, you know, Ugly were in the pond. They end up, you know, seeing two swans, but they don't notice them. So, of course, you know, basically Ugly wishes he was like pretty as one of those birds. His wish does come true when he becomes older, and I'm going to explain why. Because you all know, you know, the movie pretty well. If from those who watch this one, now it is on YouTube, and I might leave a link to you know the first part of it. So if you guys want to. Take a look at the first part of the Ugly Dunkling 1997 version of the story. I will probably put a link to the first part so then you guys can have a ch chance to check it out if you haven't. But with all due sincerity, there are certain, you know, characters that are in this um, Crayola movie, but were not in the other cartoon versions and or they were not in the original story, which, of course, in the original story, there was not really character names. But in this one that we do see, there are names to certain characters. Surprisingly, though, I'm really surprised that they decided to bother putting some names in just to make it look more appealing to the kids. Which I could definitely understand why they're trying to do that is money, basically. I'm just saying that. So, basically, in you know, they get Scruffy gets kidnapped by an evil fox who just tries to make them work for, you know... In a factory, but however, Ugly ends up saving them, or Augustus ends up saving the rats. But they don't find him ugly or anything. They just found him to be a really good friend, and that was all they needed. So, of course, Augustus still feels, you know, sad that he's different. But however, we do see that there a pack of wolves ends up capturing um, Augustus when he um, was stuck in the in the lake and. Scruffy tries to save him, but she couldn't, so she had to go try to find it. Find something to get him unstuck. But instead of the man coming down to save him and bring him in, it's a pack of wolves who are planning to eat him along with some other people. Like other animals. The other animals are in cages too, so... Of course, um, one of the wolves say, Oh, I think you're a goose. To say that to Augustus, which... Augustus is not really a goose, I... A goose is a different um, type of, well, a different type of bird. So Scruffy ends up saving them and gets on the wild goose chase. So basically she and Augustus ends up, ends up getting away and they stumbled upon this rundown abandoned warehouse shack or a feedier they ran into. So once they run into this feedier, they end up going, you know, in there and they're hoping that, you know, the people there are nice and they don't want Augustus to go away or eat them. Surprisingly, they're mice or rats, whatever you guys prefer to call call them. And Augustus ends up, you know, helping, you know, Scruffy set up her play and stuff like that. So that goes on very well. And, of course, Augustus is a swan in this, but he doesn't realize it. However, though, he was supposed to watch the lantern. So as he watched the lanterns... Scruffy throws her hat and then ends up, you know, you know, burning the whole warehouse down. So Augustus runs away, but when he comes back to see, you know, the warehouse all, you know, crumble down and all that, all turn into ash, he thinks it's his fault that the mice are dead. So basically he ends up um, running off, but of course he ends up meeting, you know, a bunch of swan who welcome him and he's surprised because they are not, like, making fun of him. They're not telling him to go away or anything like that. But, however, that's just, um, something really weird. But, however, it came to the point later on that we do see in this. is like, you know, Scruffy ends up waking up, not remembering what happened. And, um, she says, I'm gonna go find him. So, she tells him, I said, she is gonna go find him. So, she goes to find him. And finds the rubble. And of course, Augustus shows up. 
and says, oh, it's my fault. I'm the one who, you know, wasn't watching the lamp. I was paying attention to you more than the lamp and the fire burned down and I thought it was all my fault. That's basically what, you know, Augustus was saying. But, of course, Scruffy says, no, you didn't do it. I was the one who threw the hat. And, you know, Scruffy ends up committing that she, admitting that she did the did it, but not Augustus, which, of course, Augustus felt guilty. So he, he turns out to be a swan, and he and Scruffy flew back home to see their mom. Well, Augustus' mom as a duck. So that's basically how the ending of the uh, Crayola version of it. So there are other versions of Ugly Duckling that have taught in, you know, different, different you know, scenarios, different um, adaptations of Chris Henderson's story. And this is actually a really amazing, well-made story. I'm... Definitely gonna have to say, because when I saw this movie on VHS while the Crayola Ugly Duckling, I was really liking the movie ever since I was a kid. Because when I was a kid, I remember that movie being one of the good ones, and it still is a pretty good story. So, for those who are new to my uh, channel, I really highly recommend, you know, you sub to, you know, this channel. Because, you know, if you guys like it... I highly recommend you sub to it as I, you know, make different contents every day. Um, I make creepy pastas and stuff like that. So, <laughs> I guess that's all I have to say about the Ugly Duckling story. So, anyways, if you like the Ugly Duckling story, be sure you leave a like in the comment section uh, in the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Don't forget to ring notification bell to when I upload. So that, that way you guys will not miss an upload. And if you guys really want to see more of my content, feel free to check out my other videos. And I'm going to say right now, if I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode of Shadows and Pretty. So if you have any episode ideas you want me to talk about, feel free to let, let me know in the comments below. Because I would love to hear your ideas. Now, anyways, with that being said, this the morals of the story is just basically explaining just because you're different from everybody else, that doesn't mean you're ugly. Which, of course, nobody is ugly except for trolls. <laughs> nobody is ugly, so that's basically what the moral of the story is. is trying to teach kids. Just because you're different, it doesn't mean you're ugly. Like, we're all different. Like, we're not all born the same. Like, if we were all born the same, the whole world would be boring. But if we're born different, the world is, you know, more interesting by the minute. That's why everyone is loved equally. Even though some people have gone through, you know verbal, physical abuse, or any kind of abuse for that matter, just because they're different or something, that's because, you know, they just don't see you as whatever they decide to do. But, however, just because you guys are different compared to everyone else, that does not mean I hate you guys, because I never, I don't hate anybody, except for UTTPs, but that's just a different story. But anyway... I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave let me know in the comments down below. Ring the bell for notification if you guys want to, you know, take a look at it. But if you guys, you know, like this story, give it a thumbs up. If you guys um, have other suggestions for Shadows and Pretties episodes, you know, topic ideas, feel free to let them me down know in the comments below. I will be seeing you all in the next video, my little pretties. Peace out. And as always, I'll catch you all next time.